We are getting a mostly red day from the stock market, a mostly red day from the Bitcoin miners. Bitcoin is pulling back a bit. I'm going to talk about some economic data that was released. Yesterday we saw CPI, today we have PPI, and both in terms of year over year are ticking up. I'm going to look over those, look over what's going on with the Fed rate probabilities, how this is being affected by these inflation data points. And then we're going to look at Bitcoin, the spot ETFs, what's been going on there some positive news from the Ethereum spot ETFs, and then we'll look at Bitcoin on the chart. And first off, looking at CPI that came out yesterday, this came in in line with expectations in terms of year over year, but it is a tick up. We are no longer in the low twos, we are getting into the high twos in terms of percentage. We wanna see the next reading come down, and this will be before the Fed meeting. Now looking at PPI, this ticked up year over year as well. The forecast was a 2.3, which is higher than last read, and we got a 2.4, so it ticked up pretty considerably from the last reading of 1.8%. And again, we are going to get one more PPI before the Fed meeting. The Fed meeting is a little bit after mid-December. It's like 17th and 18th, something like that. And these reads are coming in before middle of December. So it'll be important to see that these are actually continuing down, not trekking back up. Remember, one read could just be a one-off, but two reads is a new trend. And because of these inflation data points, the Fed projected rate cut is coming down in terms of percentage with leaving rates current now at a 20% chance or a one in five chance according to these probabilities. Just yesterday, this was a 82% to 17%. Now it's a 79.1 to 20.9. Still favoring a 25 basis point cut though. Over the next few days, these might get a little bit closer but in my opinion, we are still getting that rate cut. There is a possibility that upcoming PPI and CPI change these probabilities considerably if inflation continues ticking higher. And I wanna show you the trajectory for these rate cuts coming up. Here's the current market expectations. December 18, a 25 basis point cut. January, no change. March, 25 basis point cut. May, no change. June, 25 basis point cut. This will obviously change depending on inflation data. But the trajectory, you can see by the end of 2025, we're expected to be at a 3.74% Fed fund rate, with us getting down to about 3.66% in the summer of 2026. So we are still early in terms of this rate cutting cycle, and this should be a tailwind, a continued tailwind for some of these riskier assets, the ones that are either going to dilute shares or they're going to take out high interest rate debt. As rates come down, that will help these companies out. They need to take any debt moving forwards. And the spot ETF data is obviously based on yesterday. The spot ETFs now have 89 billion in assets under management, getting awful close to 100 billion. IBIT has hit the $40 billion mark. Only two weeks after hitting 30 billion, this happens quickly. The piling in happens suddenly and violently. And this all happened in a record 211 days, which just completely destroyed the previous record of 1,253 days held by IEMG. Said by Eric Valchunas, it's now in the top 1% of all ETFs by assets and at 10 months old is bigger than 2,800, all 2,800 ETFs launched in the past 10 years. Tell me there is an excitement for Bitcoin for the spot ETFs. Wall Street absolutely loves it. Wall Street knows this is an asset that probably will never be replicated. And we have some positive news coming from the spot Ethereum ETFs. They added $146 million of inflows on Wednesday. And now 248 million in net inflows after dealing with all the sell pressure from Grayscale. They're finally looking at some positive overall net inflows. The tides are turning there. And here's a good quote from Nick Jirasi. In my opinion, nothing's more interesting in asset management right now than the intersection of crypto and ETFs. It involves the largest asset managers, politicians, regulators, and everyone. Remember, ETFs are simply a bridge for mainstream access to crypto. Once that bridge is fully built, there's no going back. I'm curious, do you guys think there will be future crypto winters? I certainly do. I think there will be bear markets. There will be times where it just gets overextended. Buyers get exhausted, sellers push in, and that begins a new trend, a new downward trend. This is the market. There are ups and downs. Don't make the mistake of last cycle thinking that, oh, the institutional adoption, we're not going to see a crypto winter ever again now, guys. So many people said this back in 2020 and 2021. I have the feeling that we might not have a crypto winter this time. And obviously the past doesn't dictate the future, but just remember, you know, when things are going up, when there's that excitement, when you're thinking that things can't go bad now, there's just no way things are gonna go bad. Sometimes that's when you gotta be cautious. Although admittedly, perhaps future crypto winters are less severe in terms of the percentage drop, less severe in terms of the time, amount of time they are going down. But I still do expect bear markets along the way. I still do expect 
times where Bitcoin isn't in favor. These are known as crypto winter. This should be 2026 based on previous cycles. But what do you guys think? Do you think we're not going to see any more crypto winters and we're just going to go up in perpetuity? To me, that doesn't make sense. Now, looking at Bitcoin, we are cooling back down over the last couple of days after hitting a new all time high, hitting $93,000. Keep in mind, you know, we were looking at these bearish divergences that are starting to pop up on larger time frames and we're starting to cool down a bit. What I want to see is a hold of 85,000, the psychological 85, if we keep coming down. Keep in mind how far away we have gotten from the 50 and the 200 MA. I'm not saying that we need to test them necessarily, test 70,000, but just know that we have gotten a bit extended. Remember last time, there are times we get a little extended, we do eventually retrace to the mean. This might happen in weeks, this might happen in months. We might keep trending higher before a big cooldown. Judging by past cycles, Judging by past Q4s, we could keep going higher. We could hit 100K by the end of this year, and it wouldn't be surprising. It also wouldn't surprise me to come down and test our 50MA. Remember to expect the unexpected with Bitcoin, and also keep it on this ascending channel. This is a clear pattern we are riding. We might come down and test it right around 87 or so, somewhere towards the end of November. Keep an eye on this ascending line. We have bounced off it multiple times and this is the general direction we are going in. I would expect us to continue in this general direction until this support is broken. Then Bitcoin will create a new trend. But what do you guys think about Q4? Are we going to just keep heading higher? Are there gonna be major pullbacks on the way to 100K? Or do you think 100K is coming in literally days to weeks before Q4 ends at least? I made the false prediction of expecting 80K by August and said we got into the 70Ks, but then there was a pullback before we got into August. I will say that I still expect Bitcoin to see 150K by the peak. We're suddenly getting all these like 500K, 300K price targets. Just remember, you know, the cycle comes and goes. It goes very quickly. Before you know it, it's over and we're all pulling back. But remember, we still have 2025 to be excited about. We still have the rest of this year to be excited about. And many metrics point to Bitcoin not being at the top yet. We still have a long way to go. But remember, it's nothing like buying Bitcoin at 20K, 15K, and getting a 10X or so from there. At its current price, you can hope maybe for a double up, maybe a triple up if things get really extended, and maybe double that from the Bitcoin miners. But what are you guys expecting performance wise from Bitcoin. What are you expecting performance wise from the Bitcoin miners? This is definitely the time to be investing in the Bitcoin miners. They are all at profitability. Even if Bitcoin goes down to 80,000, down to you know the high 70s, these Bitcoin miners for the most part are still in the profits. Q4 should ignite the fire. It's just a matter of getting the rest to report the iffy Q3 where Bitcoin pulled back all the way to 49K in August. And then we have some clear skies ahead with some great forward guidance for Q4, some great earnings results coming from Q4 and profitability on the horizon again. Just like before we got to the halving back in 2024, early 2024, many of these Bitcoin miners were posting profitability and that's partly why they rallied so much in my opinion. I'm expecting the same very, very soon. Thanks as always for watching guys and I'll see you on the next one.